Good morning, my name is Graham Potter and I'd like to, to uh, welcome you to our bonsai workshop. The material for today is a Scots pine. Uh, this is Yamadori Scots pine collected from the mountains uh, in Northern Europe and uh, it's been two years in the pot so he's ready to begin some work. You can see the foliage is thick and healthy, he's very compact, the needles are nice and green and so we're, uh, you know, we're really ready to do something with this tree. The great problem we have with this wonderful tree is that all of the foliage exists on two, or sorry, three very long branches and so while the styling of this tree is going to be very simple uh, and there's not going to be much dead wood or carving work to do, what we do have to do with this material is some raffia and wiring to do some quite considerable bends of these branches to bring the foliage into play. Okay, so this is the wiring basically all finished and as you can see we've gone with these main two branches. This piece of the trunk here has another one at the back which I don't think we're going to need in the overall design of the tree but we're just keeping it just in case we get so far down the road and we decide that uh, perhaps we can incorporate it. Okay, so having secured this part of the tree, we now need to bring this part forwards. <clears throat> when you bend an old tree like this, it's very important to just bring it very slowly and allow, the, allow all the fibres to gradually loosen and to gradually soften the branch. You don't want to bend it back and forth and back and forth, but just this movement that I'm doing here, we've done this for 10 minutes, this just really does soften the branch. Whereas if you just grab it and pull it in one hit, you may find that it'll, uh, it'll do something nasty. With Scots pines, often you get lots of cracking and very unpleasant sounding noises, but it's usually just the bark. So the like bangs you have to worry about. So what I'm doing here is bringing this forwards, and where my hand is, you can see I've got a little piece of dead wood. And I'm just bringing this up. And I'm just going to use a little spacer. when the branch is finally set in place we want a little gap between the branch beneath and then a small piece of wire over that gin. Just pull it and twist. <coughs> Tighten that down. There you go, that holds that in position. We've now finished the major bend in the upper part of the trunk. And what we've had to do is use this stick arrangement uh, secured to the side of the pot with a very small piece of uh, wire, copper wire loop. And what that's allowed us to do is progressively bend this elbow and slide it up the stick as we went. It's moved the elbow forwards and also up into the air, which we're gonna, it's going to be quite attractive for us at the end. As I said, it's much better than actually applying wire to the branch. So now you can see the two main branches that we've got here. The one on the upper side of the picture, obviously, is going to be very easy to uh, now bend into an apex. And then the lower branch here is going to go down and backwards, and then we'll bring that forwards again uh, to build the lower half of the tree. So you can see from this angle here, we're progressively starting to have a much more interesting shape. So this is always the most nerve-wracking part. I'm just going to bend this part here, all of this foliage here, forward uh, to uh, basically come into play to be the apex. And what I'm doing here is using a pair of gym pliers, 
holding the copper wire and twisting the copper wire as I bend with my hands so the whole thing is done in quite a controlled manner and then we just do it in a series of stages just to allow the branch to soften and flex as it goes when you bend actually with your hands it's very important to get your hands on the whole branch and support it as you go it's easier on your hands it also spreads the load on the branch because when you bend something like this you really don't want to put all the bend in one very small space it's much better to move the bend along the branch progressively it's also helpful if you can apply a little bit of a twist as well so you actually begin to spiral the branch in the direction of the wire which tightens the wire as you go and gives uh, gives you much more control Okay, you can now see the apex of the tree is, uh, is beginning to take shape. Uh, now in order to incorporate this lower branch into the tree, we need to bend this towards the back and then bring the foliage forwards. That helps to shorten it, but also it helps us to put the, uh, obviously the foliage in the position we want. But uh, this, this side branch, or this back branch that we were keeping, uh, that we mentioned earlier, you can now see from this angle it's just too far away from the rest of the tree and while it's possible to bend this it is attached to this long part here which is fairly straight and uninteresting so we have decided now that, uh, that we've brought all this into play and we can see where the tree is going to go so now it's time for this to be removed uh, and in time we'll leave a stub under here so in time this will become a gin but for now because we're using it to secure this upper branch uh, we're just going to leave it as a stub so like I say we can you know, I'm now confident that we can remove this it is a large part of the tree but uh, it really isn't going to help to try and incorporate this because it's just going to make this too much of a mass of foliage uh, which is not going to make a well proportioned bonsai at the end so there you go, that's that piece we've now reached the end of this, uh, this demonstration and we've taken this pine as far as I'm comfortable at this time Obviously we've ended up with a much more compact tree, we've ended up with something that kind of looks like a bonsai on the face of it, but uh, this obviously is first work for this tree. So really our main concern has been in placing the large branches uh, and uh, bringing the foliage much closer to the trunk, compacting the tree and getting rid of the foliage that we really didn't need with cutting the large piece off the back and so on and so forth. So, like I say, you can see the future of the tree at this point, but in no way is this an attempt at making a finished bonsai because it's going to take several more years to really refine and, uh, and define this tree as bonsai. But uh, hopefully it's given you some idea how we can, you know, using some bending techniques and so on and so forth, we can build the basic foundation for what will become a good bonsai.